Okay, class again. Good morning. So this is another topic in uh, the fundamentals of thermodynamics. So last meeting we already discussed about pressure. So we know already what are the uh, different uh, pressure readings. So we know what is an absolute pressure, what is a gauge pressure, and what is a vacuum pressure. Okay. So by this time, we are now going to discuss about the temperature. So before we go, let us first define what is temperature. So temperature, of course, this is a measure of hotness or coldness of the substance or a body. Okay. So this is used to indicate the amount of energy with the molecules of the substance. So the international system of units, or in the English systems today, uses the Celsius scale. So formerly the Celsius scale is called the centigrade scale. Okay. So of course this is named after the Swedish astronomer Andre Celsius. Okay. Another is we have the Fahrenheit scale. So this is also named after Gabriel uh, Fahrenheit. Okay. So the thermodynamic temperature scale in SI is the Kelvin scale. So this is named after Lord Kelvin. So the temperature unit on the scale is the Kelvin, of course. So it is designated by letter or capital letter K. The degree symbol was officially dropped from Kelvin in 1967. So you cannot uh, say degree Kelvin, but a capital letter K only, or you designate only a capital letter K for a Kelvin scale. Okay. So the thermodynamic temperature scale in the English system is the, of course, the Rankine scale or Rankine scale. So named also after William Rankine or Rankine. So that is in 1820 to 1872. So the temperature unit of the scale is the Rankine, which is designated by capital letter R. Okay. Okay. So we go to the pre, uh, temperature measuring instrument. Okay, so how we are going to measure the temperature? Okay, for human body, we use the thermometer, of course, in order to uh, determine the normal temperature of the body. Okay, so that is the common uh, measuring instrument. It's the mercury thermometer. So we have also the so-called digital infrared thermometer. Okay. So that is another high-tech instrument. So used, of course, to determine easily the temperature of a body. Okay, so we have also the bimetallic thermometer. So this is like this. 
and another we have the pyrometer so this pyrometer is used in order to determine a temperature which is quiet higher and then we have also the so-called thermocouple so there are several uh, instrument that measures temperature okay so we have the comparison of the two uh, different temperature scales so we have here the Celsius and the Fahrenheit scale comparison okay so we know already that the boiling point of water is in uh, Fahrenheit scale water starts to boil at 212 degrees Fahrenheit in a Celsius scale of course that is 100 100 degree or degrees Celsius okay the freezing point of course this in this uh, temperature scale in Fahrenheit that is negative 32 okay and in Celsius scale that is designated as zero meaning the water will starts to press or starts to solidify at this condition or at this temperature scale okay okay so this is another uh, arbitrary scale of course the Fahrenheit and the centigrade or the Celsius scale and we have also the so-called absolute value so that is defined of course in in English that is defined in Rankine or Rankin and in SI we define that in Kelvin so as previously mentioned okay so how you are going to change so for example the Fahrenheit scale to Rankine scale of course simple so if you have already a value of temperature in Fahrenheit scale you just add 460 while for Kelvin scale if you have already the Celsius scale you just add 273 or to be exact that is 273.15 okay or yes but how we are going to let us go back to the arbitrary scale the Fahrenheit and the Celsius scale so by this time we are going to derive a relationship between the Celsius and the Fahrenheit scale so knowing from the previous uh, slides the comparison of the two scales so we're in so as mentioned a while ago that the water will start to boil in Celsius or in yes in Celsius scale at 100 okay and solidifies at zero and then in Fahrenheit scale the water starts to boil at 212 and solidifies at 32 okay let us now make 
an interpolation. Okay? An interpolation. Okay. So, ratio and proportion. Okay? So, the basis is, of course, the freezing point and the boiling point of the water. Okay. So, by interpolation, 100 minus 0. So, this is the freezing point or the boiling point minus the freezing point divided by the freezing point minus the temperature rating inside or between 0 and 100 as to 212 minus 32 this is again the freezing point and the boiling point minus or over the freezing or the boiling point minus the Fahrenheit scale between 32 and 212. Okay. So, by just manipulating the equation, so we arrive to an equation of the 21,200 minus 100 degree Fahrenheit minus 18,000 minus 180 uh, degree Celsius. Okay. So, rearranging uh, the equation. So, that is 3, 2. Okay. So, combining constants. 3,200 minus 100 uh, degree Fahrenheit minus or equal to negative 180 degree Celsius. Okay. Dividing both sides the equation. Okay. So, we divide both sides of the equation by 20 and then we arrive to an equation or a relationship of degree Fahrenheit is equals to 9 over 5 degree Celsius plus 32. Okay. So we can also look the graphical presentation of the absolute of the absolute value. Okay. So in this present uh, graphical presentation, uh, we now see the comparison of the four uh, temperature scale okay so we have here the kelvin scale and the celsius scale the rankine and the fahrenheit scale okay so we have also here the term absolute zero. Okay, what is an absolute zero? Absolute zero is at negative 273 degrees Celsius. Okay. Take note. You cannot have a temperature lower than absolute zero. Okay. Absolute zero is the possible uh, temperature that uh, may be uh, reached, of course. But below absolute zero, that is impossible. Okay. Another is absolute zero is the temperature at which the atoms are frozen. Okay? Meaning, 
the atomic movement or the molecular movement ceases at this point. Okay, frozen. Okay. So in Antarctica, the lowest temperature reading measure is only negative 89 degrees Celsius, or that is negative 129. Take note, absolute zero is negative 273 degrees Celsius. Okay, so it's quite uh, far from negative 273 temperature in Antarctica. Okay. So, example. So, based on the procedure on how you are going to device, say for example, a new temperature scale. Okay. So, in this example, so we have, okay, so let us now take this example. A new temperature scale is desired with freezing point of water at zero degree X and boiling, boiling point occurring at 1,000 degree X. Now, the problem is derive a conversion between degree Celsius and degrees X and what is the absolute value in degrees X. Okay. Solution, of course, by interpolation again. So, the same as the procedure and the derivation of the relation between the Celsius scale and the Fahrenheit scale. Okay. So, in degrees Celsius, or degrees, uh, uh, in Celsius scale rather, water boils at 100 and three stars are freezing is at zero. Okay? And in this new scale, the uh, boiling point is 1,000 and the freezing point is also zero. Okay, so by interpolation again, interpolation, so we arrive to a relation of degree Celsius is equals to 0.1 degree X. Okay, so this is the relation uh, derived. For the absolute value, so we have Degrees X is equals to negative 273 over 0.1. So, in this equation, that is, the constant is 0.1. And we know already that uh, the absolute value or absolute zero is at negative 273 degrees Celsius. So, substituting... That value here, that is negative 273 divided 0.1, the absolute value is, of course, negative 2,731.5. Okay, so that is the example. If you are going to devise another temperature scale. Okay. Another example, we have here example number two. During a heating process, the temperature of a system rises by 10 degrees Celsius. Take note, this is a change in temperature. Rises, meaning a change from an initial reading to a final reading. So that this 10 degrees is only the difference uh, between the two temperature readings. Okay. 
express this rise in temperature in Kelvin, Fahrenheit, and Ronkine. Okay. So, solution. Take note that the change in temperature in Kelvin scale and in Celsius scale are the same. Okay. So, of course, that is 10 degrees Celsius is the same as with 10 degree Kelvin. Take note, this will only happen if the temperature is a change in temperature. Okay? Now, take note that for the absolute value in English, you will notice that the value in Rankine scale is higher as compared to the value in Kelvin scale. Take note that in the previous slides, uh, in our derivation of the formula, we see in the there is a 5 and 9 in the equation. Take note that this 1.8 value here is the value of 9 divided by 5. Okay. And changing this, if you have already value in Kelvin or Celsius scale, just multiply it by 1.8, you will now get the absolute value or the change and temperature in Fahrenheit and the Rankine scale. So take note that 10 multiplied by 1.8, that is 18. Okay? So the change in temperature now in Rankine and in Fahrenheit is equals to 18 degree Fahrenheit. Okay? Okay. So, that's all about temperature. So, let us now proceed to the other topic. Okay? We have here the relationship of the force and mass. Okay, so this is from Newton's law. Okay. It states that, or this is the second law of Newton. So we uh, know already. So what is this second law states? Okay, this states that if an unbalanced force acts in a body, the body will accelerate in the direction of the unbalanced force. Okay. And the acceleration will be proportional to the unbalanced force and inversely proportional to the mass of the body. Okay, so take note that this is the equation. Okay? The force is directly proportional to the mass and acceleration. Or simply, acceleration is directly proportional to the unbalanced force. So, we are referring for the net force or the unbalanced force and inversely proportional to its mass. Okay? Okay. So, although this uh, topic here is very simple in SI units. So, we have no problem for the SI. But take note that in our country, we are using different standards. Sometimes we use the English standards. We use the international system standards. We use also the European standards. Okay, so that's why this topic is very important. Okay. 
So there is a time that this formula can easily be computed. Okay. So take note that in the numerator, we have here the so-called the constant of proportionality. Okay? So the problem now is we have uh, two values for k here. One is a unity value and another is a non-unity. So we know already that if we say the value of k is unity, meaning the value of that is 1. So there is no problem in the calculation. But if the value of this k is non-unity, so if you do, did not, uh, if you do not consider in your calculation the value of that k, so there is a problem with the result of your calculation. Okay, so let us now proceed. In English, take note. In order to Uh, develop or produce a one pound of force. Take note that is one pound of force. The subscript F here represents a force. So in order to produce this one pound it is required to move one slug of mass to, a s to an acceleration rather of one foot per second square. Okay? So take note. So in order to develop a force of one pound, it is required to move or to accelerate a mass of one slug to an acceleration of one foot per second square. Okay? In CGS units, this is centimeter, gram, seconds, units. So that is CGS. Centimeter, gram, seconds. We have another units or different units in English. Okay? The force in CGS is defined in dyne. Okay. How we are now going to develop or produce a dyne of force? Okay. So, in order to produce a force of one dyne, it is a required to move or to accelerate one gram of mass to one centimeter per second square. So, if you accelerate uh, one gram of mass to one centimeter per second square, the force now, or the unbalanced force acting on that particular uh, body is, of course, one dyne of Force. Okay? Okay. In MKS, what is MKS? MKS is meter, kilogram, seconds. That is MKS units. Okay. The unit in MKS, of course, kilogram, the force. And, of course, the mass is also in kilograms. Okay. Okay. So, by this time, the value of the constant of proportion, uh, proportionality, rather, is no longer unity. So, but we have value. Okay. So let's take a look at this now. Okay. 
So, 1 kilogram of force, in order to develop a 1 kilogram of force, or produce a 1 kilogram of force, it is required to accelerate 1 kilogram of mass to 9.806 meter per second square. Okay, so rearranging now the equation, the constant of proportionality here is equal to 9.806 kilogram mass. The subscript M here represents a mass. And then acceleration is meter per second. And here in the numerator, the subscript F represents a force. So take note. The uh, force is different from a mass. Okay. Again, in English units, we have also a unit of mass in pounds. Okay. So previously, in the previous slides, we used the unit of mass as slug. So by this time, we now use the Unit of mass as found. Okay. So, in order to develop a force of one pound, okay, it is required to accelerate one pound mass to an acceleration of 32.174 feet per second square. So that is the required acceleration in order to develop a force of one found force. Now, rearranging the equation or getting the value of the constant of proportionality, the value now is 32.174. Take note that the value in MKS of the constant of proportionality is 9.806 or 9.81. Okay? Uh, but here, we are now have a value of 32.2 or 32.174 pounds. Okay. So take note, this is another non-unity value. Now, in CGS, take note that previously, the unit of force is in dyne. Oh, by this time, we are now using the gram force. Okay? Take note, CGS is centimeter grams. Okay, we are now using the gram force here. Okay? So what is the required acceleration of one gram mass in CGS units? So that is 980 0.6 centimeter per second square. That's why the value of K now is 980.6 gram centimeter per gram force second square. Okay? So, there is a somewhat uh, difficulty, of course, in calculation of the second law of Newton, uh, especially if you are a beginner in this subject, okay? Okay, so let us now proceed to the unit conversion, okay? <coughs> so, considering, of course, the value of unity, uh, of the constant of proportionality K, Okay. In the previous slides. So this is in SI units. Okay. The value of K in SI is 1 kilogram mass meter per newton second square. But that is only 1. In MKS... Take note that the value is 9.806 gram mass 
meter kilogram force per second squared. Now, so in this uh, equation, we develop a conversion wherein one kilogram of force is equivalent to 9.806 newton. Okay? And in English, so taking again this uh, value of uh, K in MKS and in, in, in English, so we also develop a conversion of 1 kilogram force equivalent to 2.205 pound of force. Okay. And another we have here in English using the slug unit of mass. Okay. We also develop a conversion of one slug is equals 32.174 pound mass. And of course, in CGS, we also develop a conversion of one gram force equivalent to 980.6 dynes. Now, the question now is when the value of K is unity or not. Okay. Now, simply, or that is very simple, okay? Take note that if the unit of force is the same as with the unit of mass. Take note, using the formula in Newton's law or the force equals to mass multiplied by the acceleration over the constant of proportionality K. Okay. So, the value of K is non-unity if the unit of the mass and the force are the same. But if you are computing a force which is different from the unit of mass, so for example, the mass is in pound or in slug rather, and the force is in pounds, take note that the value of K is unity, or that is only one. But if the unit of force is pound force, and the unit of mass is pound mass, take note that K value is non-unity. Okay? So, I think that is clear to everybody. Okay, so let us now go to the mass and weight. So, this is another topic. Okay. Take note. Okay. The mass of a body is the absolute quantity of matter in it, while weight is the force of gravity on the body or force exerted by the body against the ground. Okay. So in this equation, the mass over the uh, g or the oh, k rather is equals to the force multiplied by the acceleration. This is. Uh, equation from the second law of Newton. Okay? And that is also equal to Fg over G. Yeah? Or that is the gravitational acceleration and the gravitational uh, or the constant G. Okay? Take note 
that at the surface or near the surface of the earth, K and J are numerically equal. Okay? So near the surface of the earth, K and G or the constant of proportionality and the gravitational acceleration are uh, the same. Okay? Okay, so let us now again consider a problem or an exercises about the previous uh, topic, the Newton's law or the second Newton's law. Okay, so let us now consider this. A mass of one or point one slug in space is subjected to an external vertical force of four pounds. If local gravity of acceleration is 30.5 feet per second uh, square and friction effects are neglected, determine the acceleration of the mass if the external vertical force is acting A, upward and B, downward. Okay, so let us now consider the first condition. Uh, and using the equation on the second law of Newton. Okay? So take note that the direction of the force in the first condition is upward. And of course, the weight of the body or the mass is of course always in the direction of or in downward direction. Take note that weight is always towards the center of the earth. Okay? So, take note that the mass is one slump. Okay? So, by this time, we are now getting the value of the weight of the mass. Okay? okay. That weight is same as with the force created by the mass, okay? which is equals to mass of the body multiplied by acceleration over the constant of proportionality, K. Okay? Now, substituting, take note here that the value of K is unity since the unit used by weight and mass are different. Okay. Take note that the weight or the force is in pounds and the mass is given in slump. Okay. Substituting the values, we get the weight of a mass of one slug equivalent to 3.05 pounds. Okay? Now, getting now the acceleration, again, using the formula. So, by this time, we are now getting the value of the unbalanced force or the F net or the net force. Okay. So, since the direction between the two or the direction of the weight and the force applied is different, so we are going to subtract the two values. The 4 pound is upward and the force developed by the mass is 3.05 which is downward direction. So, subtracting the two and then the mass of 0 0.01 divided by the mass of 0 0.01, I point 0.1 rather, the acceleration now is 9.5 feet per second square. Okay? Same as for the condition at B. So, the condition of, of B is that the force and the weight are in the same direction or that is downward okay so if the direction of the weight and mass are the same of course we are going to sum up the four uh, 
found force and the 3.05 pounds okay so the acceleration now here is 70.5 feet per second square okay again we have a relation between the weight on earth versus the weight on moon so in this case consider the mass on earth equal to the mass on moon so this is the the principle uh, the weight on earth is the same as the weight on moon okay excuse me okay so weight on earth is equals to mass on earth multiplied by the gravi gravitational acceleration on earth okay and the weight on moon is equals to the mass on moon and the gravitational acceleration of course the moon so knowing that the mass on earth is the same as with the mass uh, of course at the moon okay so equating now the two equations we arrive to an equation which is equals to the weight in earth over the gravitational acceleration on earth is equal to the weight on moon over the gravitational acceleration on the moon okay okay so let us now again go to the other uh, fundamental principles or fundamental topics in thermodynamics okay we have here the specific volume so we know already that a specific volume is just equal to the reciprocal of the density okay so we know already that in this equation so that is very simple so take note that we have here a constant cons uh, constants for volume so in english units mks and si okay so in english we have one cubic foot equals to seven point four eight one gallons and one gallon of course so in mks that is 28.317 cubic centimeter and one gallon 3.785 four liters okay so we have 1,000 liter in MKS that is equivalent in SI to 1 cubic meter 1,000 cubic centimeter or that is equivalent to 1 liter and take note here 1 drum is equivalent to 55 gallons so that is for petroleum so unrefined and 1 barrel is equivalent to 42 gallons okay so refined petroleum products and other liquids okay we have also the relation between the weight density and the specific weight okay so the weight density or the unit weight is equals to the force or weight over the volume okay or simply force or the weight is equals to mass multiplied by gravitational acceleration okay so that is equals to knowing that mass over volume is equals to density okay so we arrive to this equation okay so take note huh? one slug is 32.174 for us previously uh, derived okay and mks same relationship okay and this i same relationship okay so what is g sub o and g sub c take note that g sub o is the observed gravitational acceleration and the g sub c is the constant of proportionality okay so take note that if the uh, body is of course uh, near the surface of the earth the value of that are uh, the same okay Another, we have the specific gravity and the relative 
density. Okay? So, specific gravity, take note that this specific gravity is based on the, uh, for liquid, that is based on the standard liquid. Okay? So, that standard liquid is, of course, the water. Okay? So, that's why we have here, that is the density of the substance over density of water. Okay? So, for solid and liquid. Okay? So, for gases, that is, specific gravity is equal to the molecular weight of the gas over the molecular weight of the air. Okay? So, the standard uh, fluid or gas is, of course, the air. Okay? Okay, so let us now consider this example. The mass of air in a room of 3 meters by 5 meters by 20 meters is known to be 350 kilograms. Determine the density, specific volume, specific weight of the air. Okay, so knowing that uh, density equals to mass over volume, and the mass is given, we have 350, and the volume, of course, is... I'm multiplying the uh, 3 multiplied by 5 or the height, the width, and the length. So the density now is 1.167 kilogram per cubic meter. And knowing that a specific volume is the reciprocal of the density, okay, 1 divided by that density, of course, 0.85. 7 cubic meter per kilogram. Okay? So, knowing also that the unit weight, okay? So, that is 1.67 multiply it by 9.81. Okay? So, that is defined in Newton, okay? Kilo Newton per cubic meter, okay? 11.45, okay? Another example we have here, a tank contains a mixture of 20 kilograms of nitrogen and 20 kilograms of carbon monoxide. The total tank volume is 20 cubic meter. Determine the density and the specific volume of the mixture, okay? Solution again, Density equals the mass over volume. So, since this is a mixture, so we add the 2. So, in the volume is 20. So, therefore, the density is 2 kilogram per cubic meter. Again, specific volume, the reciprocal of density, that is equals to 0.5 cubic meter per kilogram. Okay? Another example. So... Two liquids of different densities, uh, density 1 equals to 1,500 kilogram per cubic meter, and density 2 of 500 kilogram per cubic are poured together into one 100 liters tank. Filling it, okay. If the resulting density of the mixture is 800 kilogram per cubic meter, find the respective amounts of liquid used. Also find the weight of the mixture, okay. The gravitational acceleration 9.675 meter per second squared. Okay? So, in the condition, in the problem, the total volume is, of course, the summation. Uh, the volume 1 plus the volume 2, which is equal to 100 liters or 0.1 cubic meter. And, of course, the mass or the total mass is equal to the summation of, of course, masses. Mass 1 plus mass 2. Or the density of the mass total is, of course, density equals to the mass over the volume. Okay? Okay. So the mass now is 800 kilogram per cubic meter multiplied by 0.1 cubic. That is now 80 kilograms. Okay? So, continuation. Also, the mass 
is equals to mass 1 plus mass 2. So, the total mass is 80. So, knowing also that mass is equals dens uh, density is equals to mass over the volume or the mass equals to density times volume 1 and density 2 volume 2. So, we arrived to a value of the volume is equivalent to 0.3 cubic meter. Okay? So, the mass now of the first liquid. So, knowing the density and the volume, so that is equivalent to 45 kilograms. And the mass too, of course, is 500 kilograms. And the weight of mixture, of course, is uh, knowing the equation weight is equals to mass times the gravitational acceleration, that is now equivalent to 774 newton. Okay? Another we have the conservation of mass. Okay? So, law of conservation of mass states that the total mass is constant or indestructible. Okay? So, at any point, of course, along the stream, uh, in this figure, the mass is considered constant. Okay. So, considering the continuity equation. Okay. So, Q or the discharge is equal to cross-sectional area multiplied by the, of course, velocity of the fluid flowing inside the pipe. Okay. So, that is, of course, at any point. Okay? So, specific volume, again, is the same. Okay? 1 over the density. So, take note, this is for a liquid uh, fluid, of course. Okay? So, this is a liquid. For gaseous uh, fluids, We always consider the density of the gas at any point. Okay? So, the equation from continuity equation, multiply it by the density that is applied to a gaseous okay, substance. Okay? Okay, so let us now consider this example. A pump discharges into a 3 meter per side cubical tank. Okay, cubical tank. The flow rate is 300 liters per minute and fluid has a density of 1.2 times that of water. Density of water equals 1,000 kilogram per cubic meter. Determine A, the flow rate in kilogram per second and the time in it takes to fill the tank. Okay. Solution. So, since the tank is cubical, so the volume, of course, is the uh, product, of course, of the three sides, okay, which is 27. That is 27 cubic meter, not 37. Okay. So, the discharge now is 300. So, changing it to kilogram per second, the value is 6 kilogram per second. Okay. And the time now required, of course, is the volume divided by the discharge. Okay. So, the volume is 27 cubic meter divided by 0.3 cubic meter per minute the resulting value now is, of course, 90 minutes. Okay? So, I think example now are very sufficient uh, for you to know how you are going to calculate the fundamental principles in thermodynamics such as temperature uh, the first or the second law of Newton the weight the relation of the mass 
the discharge, and so on and so forth. So, it is very now uh, sufficient. Okay. So, examples are very ex uh, well explained uh, for you to master the subject in thermodynamics. I think, so this is the last slide. So, thank you very much, class. Okay?